In this demonstration, we'll look at the benefits of using simulation in NXCAM. There's a 5-axis machine tool here on the screen. I'll hide the sheet metal so it's easier to focus on the kinematic elements of our machine tool. Next, we'll look at a single operation that finishes the front of this part. It's created using our streamline technique and it uses a full 5-axis motion to create the toolpath. I'll verify it quickly so you can see what the tool is doing. The tool is zigging across, wrapping back up, and returning to the start point. This shows us the tool motion, but doesn't really tell us much about what the rest of the machine tool is doing. We need to simulate to get more information about the validity of our operation. The simulation control panel in NX contains a lot of information about our operation. At the top, we'll find out whether our spindle is on or off, whether the coolant is on and off, our feed rate, and other information. There's also an area of the panel for the current coordinates of our machine tool. And in this window, we'll see the G-code display in a minute. Let's begin with a simpler form of visualization called Toolpath Simulate. Here, if I turn on the, sh the uh, toolpath and we play, you'll see that the tool just follows the centerline code as we defined it in the operation. Although this is helpful, we don't see any tool changes or other tool motion that actually occur on your shop floor, so it's not a completely accurate simulation. To do that, I'll reset the machine and we'll switch to a machine code simulate. This works in a fundamentally different way. We post the operation through the post processor. The G code is then read back into the simulation engine. So in effect, we're simulating on the same code that you'll be running on your shop floor. This shows us all the tool changes and other motions that your machine is going through. Here I'll turn on 3D material removal so that we can see this actually remove stock as the cutter moves through its operation. I'll speed this up so we can get through the first pass and show you just a little bit of the beginning of the second pass. Note, of course, that I can dynamically change my view as I'm simulating to focus in on areas that I'm interested in. Okay, let's stop this part of the simulation here and look at a different type of problem that can be solved with simulation. The operation I just showed you was created in NX but you may have G-code on your shop floor that's been hand edited or maybe you're not sure where it came from. If you're making a part you've not run for a while, you might want to make sure that that G-code is valid before you send it out to the shop. We can actually simulate existing G-code in NX and I'll show you how to do that now. We'll just go to Tools, choose Simulate Machine Code File and I'll pick up the G-code file from my directory. Before I begin simulation, I'll show you some of the other options that are available here. I've got my collision detection turned on and I'm looking for two different things. I want to know whether the part is colliding with the tool in rapid mo mode or whether my tool is colliding with my fixture. Here's the problem. I've got these two clamps here and the tools that generate these holes get very close to the clamps. So I want to make sure there's no collisions before I send this out. I'll turn on the 3D material removal again and let's get started. Again, all the tool changes occur as they really will on your machine tool and we'll begin here with a couple of profile passes.
what you're seeing in the background is some of the actual part features revealed as we machine material away because that part model is still back there. Now we're spot drilling. We go to our next tool change. This is the pre-drill hole coming up. <clears throat> and we don't see any collisions yet. This looks like a valid program. You see the G-code scrolling by in this window. This is our finished drill hole. And I'm going to slow this down a little bit because we do in fact have a collision. There's something wrong with my G-code and the tool is just clipping the corner of this part as it comes by. So that's something we know we need to fix and I can see the exact line in the G-code where that problem's occurring. Let's continue. So it drills the hole for me and now we'll countersink. And here we've got another one of those problems, but let's continue. So I've got two problems I need to fix there. But there's something else I'd like to try. I'm going to my machine tool view, and the spot drill that was specified for that job has quite a long holder. What I'd like to know is, can I use a tool with a shorter holder? In NX, the pockets are the determinant for the tool number. So pocket 7 is going to come out in your code as tool 7. So to make this change, all I need to do is drag this off to another pocket and grab my other spot drill, the one with the shorter holder, put it into pocket 7, and then rerun my program. I'll speed through the first operation here. And this next operation is where I'm evaluating the new shorter holder. And in fact, I've got a problem. The purple indicates that it's violating a clearance uh, distance that was set. And if I continue, it's actually going to collide. So that new holder is not going to work out. I am going to have to go find that extension holder to make this program run. Let's look at one other type of problem that we can resolve with NX simulation. I'm going back to my program view, and there was a second operation here. It uses a five-axis toolpath to machine this round on the front of my part. I'm using a technique here called an interpolated vector. I can set these vectors dynamically and see my machine tool interact while I'm setting the vectors. Here's the benefit of doing that. Let's say that I think I'd like to change this vector at the bottom and lower my tool angle as I come to the bottom of the part. Watch what happens to the RAM of the machine. As I drop far enough down, it turns orange. I just ran out of travel. In many shops, you wouldn't know this until you actually got the program out to the floor. Then you'd have to run back in and get your program recoded with the travel limit problem resolved. In some types of simulation, you've actually got to create the G-code before you can d determine that you have a problem. In NX, with our dynamic positioning, the programmer knows there's a problem with that tool axis while he's making the decisions to create the program. The sooner you can get those problems fixed, the more efficient your operation will be. It's back to you, Paul.